In a spectrophotometer, if the Beer-Lambert law is true for a particular solution, then the analytical signal A recorded is proportional to the sample concentration C. This can often be written as the absorbance, capital A, is equal to ABC, where A is the absorptivity of the solute, B is the path length in the spectrophotometer, and C is the concentration of the solution. This then means that if we put two different solutions of the same solute into the same spectrophotometer, then the ratios of their absorbances will be proportional to the ratios of their concentrations given by this simple proportionality equation. And in practice, most spectrophotometry calculations are based on finding the values of the particular variables in this equation and then solving this equation for an unknown value. We can now work through the answers to these five spectrophotometry questions. In this first question, we're told that a known concentration of 0.26 millimoles per decimeter cubed gives an absorbance of 1.00. These will be our values for C0, the known concentration. So C0 is 0 0.26 millimoles per decimeter cubed, giving an absorbance of exactly 1. And what we have to do then is to calculate the concentration of a sample, and this will be our unknown concentration C, that records an absorbance of 0.76. We now have the variables to substitute into our proportionality equation. So taking the ratio of the concentrations, this is C divided by 0.26, will equal the ratio of the absorbances, 0.76 divided by 1. And then simply rearranging this equation, C will equal 0.76 divided by 1, which is just 0.76. And 0.26 as a divisor on the left-hand side becomes a multiplier on the right-hand side, giving a value for the unknown concentration of 0 0.198. And the units of this unknown concentration will be the same as the units of the known concentration, which is millimoles per decimeter cubed. In question two, the concentration of the known solution is now 3.4 millimoles per decimeter cubed, and its absorbance is 0 0.820. And in this question, we're told that another solution, this time with a concentration that we know, which is 2.6 millimoles per decimeter cubed, is put into the spectrophotometer and in this case, we have to calculate the absorbance that we would expect to see for this solution. Now we can substitute these values in our proportionality equation. So the ratio of the two concentrations, 2.6 divided by 3.4, they are both of the same units. So the ratio of the concentrations just becomes the ratio of the two values. And this will equal the ratio of the two absorbances. A divided by 0 0.820. Rearranging this equation, A then will equal the 2.6 times 3.4, multiplying the absorbance of 820, giving an absorbance for the unknown solution of 0 0.627. In the third question, Again, we have a known concentration giving a particular value of absorbance. So we can enter these values as 0 0.046 millimoles per decimeter cubed, giving an absorbance of 0 0.893. And then we're told that this initial solution is diluted, and it is diluted in a ratio of 5 centimeters cubed of solution made up to 100 centimeters cubed. So this gives a dilution ratio, n, whose value will be given by the final volume divided by the initial volume of the dilution. So this is a dilution factor of 20. So using this dilution factor, we know that the final 
concentration Cs will equal the initial concentration C0 in this case divided by n giving a value of 0 0.046 divided by 20 which will give a concentration of 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3 again millimoles per decimeter cubed so this is our value for Cs 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3 millimoles per decimeter cubed and we have to calculate the final absorbance A. Substituting these values in our proportionality equation we would have 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 0 0.046 is equal to A divided by 0 0.893 and this will then give us a value of A equal to 0 0.0447. However, we would have been able to use a shortcut here because we know that the ratio of the two concentrations, Cs over C0, is equal to 1 over the dilution ratio. But we also know that Cs over C0 is also equal to As over A0. And this will tell us that the ratio of absorbances is in the same ratio as that of the concentrations. So we would have been able then to say that the concentration of the final solution would then have been equal to the concentration of the initial solution just divided by the dilution ratio, which then was 0 0.893 divided by 20, which will give us the same answer as 0 0.0447. In this fourth question, we're dealing with the results from a fluorescent spectrophotometer, which will give the results in arbitrary units up to a scale of 100. And we know that a known concentration then of quinine of 0 0.164, and this is in micrograms per centimeter cubed, gives us a reading of 82.0. And then we're told that a sample of tonic water has been diluted by a factor of 200, and then gives a reading of 56.8 in the spectrophotometer. Now this is the reading for the diluted tonic water, so we will call this value C dash, and we can calculate the value for C dash first of all, just by using our proportionality equation, giving us C dash divided by 0 0.164 will equal 56.8 divided by 82.0. So C dash will then equal the 0.164 a divisor on the left hand side becomes a multiplier on the right hand side multiplied by the ratio of the two readings giving a value for the concentration of the diluted solution of 0 0.1136 and this would be in micrograms per centimeter cubed but we know that this diluted solution C dash was obtained by diluting an initial concentration we'll call C by a factor of 200. So C dash will equal the initial concentration divided by 200. So rearranging this equation, the concentration of the initial solution will equal C dash, which we know is 0 0.1136, multiplied then by 200, which will give a concentration for the tonic water of 22.7 micrograms per centimeter cubed. In this final question, we're told that a concentration of 0 0.56 millimoles per decimeter cubed gives an absorbance in a spectrophotometer, an absorbance of exactly one. And we're asked, by what factor would we need to dilute a solution of 3.6 moles per decimeter cubed such that its absorbance falls within the range of zero to one? Well, the first thing we could do is to work out theoretically what absorbance we would observe if we were able to record the absorbance of the concentrated solution directly. So if we put this value into our ratio, 3.6, and this is moles per decimeter cube, we'll calculate the theoretical absorbance that we would see with a concentrated solution. Now the first thing we observe is that the units for the two concentrations are different. 
And if we want to take a ratio, we should make the units the same. So in our proportionality equation, we will first of all change moles to millimoles. And we know one mole is 10 to the 3 millimoles. So this first concentration becomes 3.6 times 10 to the 3 millimoles per decimeter cubed. And this will then be divided in the ratio by 0.56 millimoles per decimeter cubed. And this will equal the ratio of the absorbances A divided by 1. Now, both units are now the same, so we can cancel the units top and bottom. And so our calculation of the theoretical absorbance without dilution of the initial solution will become equal to 1 times the ratio of concentration, 3.6 times 10 to the 3, divided by 0 0.56, which will equal a theoretical absorbance of 6,429. Now clearly this would not be possible to record this in a spectrophotometer, not only because it's way outside the range of the spectrophotometer, but also because at such a high concentration the proportionality relationship of Beer's law would not hold. So this means that we would have to dilute the solution, and we're told that dilution can occur in stages, and each stage the dilution ratio is 20. So in the first stage, we would then dilute the concentration by a factor of 20. So if we dilute the concentration by a factor of 20, we will reduce the absorbance also by a factor of 20. And this would give us, after one dilution stage, a theoretical absorbance of 321.5, which is still too high. So we will now dilute by another factor of 20, which will give us an absorbance of 16.1, still too high and requiring another dilution stage, again dividing by 20, giving an absorbance of 0 0.80, which is now within the range that the instrument would be able to measure between 0 and 1. So this has required us to perform a serial dilution using one, two, three stages. So the answer is we will require three dilutions to reduce the absorbance of the unknown solution to within a range that can be measured within this spectra photometer. This then gives us the five answers to our spectrophotometry question.